how are you? I hope you're doing well. So I watched the, I think I'm saying it, the Natomas, Natomas Unified School District board meeting last night and I will tell you what happened. So this is the school district uh, Project Veritas just a few days ago released a video exposing a teacher who admitted on camera to indoctrinating his students into radical far leftist ideology. He wants to turn them into activists. He talked about giving them extra credit if they go to protest or counter protest. Uh, we saw pictures within his classroom where he had a poster of Mao. He had a Tifa poster. Um, he admitted to wanting to turn them into revolutionaries and things like that. So this video came out. Right after the video came out, uh, it went viral. Parents were very, very upset, calling the school, contacting the school. Uh, there was one video I saw with a mother who actually had a daughter in his class. And after she saw this, she went and pulled her daughter out of school. And she even posted this picture. So uh, this is a, a piece of schoolwork. If you were in school or have kids, you remember you do schoolwork. Sometimes your teacher will put a stamp on it. So these are the types of stamps that he uses. Uh, that's Kim Jong-un, uh, North Korea Kim Jong-un. Interestingly, the timing of this was quite odd because there was a school board meeting planned last night, really close to when all of this exploded and parents were planning a protest there and uh, it got very, very heated. So I'm gonna show you just a few of the parents that came up and spoke. So how these school board meetings work and typically a city council meeting too. You can do the same thing at city council. That is your constitutional right um, to go and to speak and be heard. Uh, so how the school board meeting is, is they'll have agenda items. They go through all those first and then they open up to public comment and you have two minutes of uninterrupted time uh, to say, voice any concerns or anything that you wanna say to the board. And that's not a time that they will typically have a, a back and forth dialogue with you. They don't answer questions. It's just a time for you to get up and talk and have your voice heard. So that's when it got really heated obviously was with the public comment so I'll show you a few of those and I'll be honest with you I really could have clipped out every single parent of this meeting uh, but here's a few of them and then we'll talk I speak for my son and any child who doesn't have a parent to be their voice what has been exposed about Gabriel Guype by Project Veritas is exactly what I was concerned about happening at Babcock Elementary Twin Rivers Unified School District, whom was and is not allowing parents or guardians on campus. As educators, your job is academics, not morals, not values, religion, political ideology, or anything outside of academics. We have 24 Sacramento students who are abandoned in Afghanistan. You guys are sitting here saying you have somebody preaching communism on paid leave. Do those lives mean nothing to you? What will you say to those children's peers who are asking, where are my friends? When are they coming home? And you stand by this man preaching Antifa and communism in our classrooms. A disgrace. Any teacher or staff pushing anti-American, hateful, or political agendas against America on our students, families, or communities, we want you out. Now. Not paid leave and not in a week or two. Now. Right. Sacramento is not a city that raises our children on hate, racism, or a victim mentality. We raise our children to be strong, independent, and to stand up for what's right, and to speak up when it is time to speak up like now. The reason why my daughter is standing behind me is because my job as her parent is to protect her from anybody that has ill will towards her. So being that this is her first year at this high school that is world renowned and everybody knows about this school, it's so perfect and everybody does everything right. The first time my daughter tells me and she goes against my wishes to come out of a classroom that's disruptive to her well-being, I have an issue. I am very articulate. My children are very well read. 
They, are, they speak their opinion. They make sure that they are clear in what they do and do not like. And for the fact that my 17-year-old daughter had to come to me and said, Mom, you don't understand. He's, he's, let me explain. This means that in two weeks, in 13 days, he was allowed to change my daughter's mind about some fascist crap that y'all have led in this school. I'm tired. This is ridiculous. I'm from Texas. So this don't go on in Texas. This does not go on in Texas. There are two grades higher than California, period. So to think that my very sound-minded daughter would go against me and my wishes and our values and our home to be able to go and support this man and he is putting her in harm's way, what the hell are y'all doing? Casey Clay, um, just looking out and seeing masks, it's like hiding. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's actually quite sickening. So uh, I, I have three, stu or three kids. One graduated from uh, Intercom. The other two are juniors. And like one of the other parents stated here, my kid that graduated loved Intercom. Diversity, everything that we have to offer. When I heard about this, um, I wasn't surprised. I wasn't surprised. Uh, last year, listening in was an, an eye-opener, and my juniors, I ask a lot of questions, and we have open communication, which is good. Uh, not a lot of people get that from their kids, um, and that's why teachers, it's important not to be indoctrinating them, because they look at teachers as respected adult figures. It's not your position not your position to tell your opinions or your thoughts. You can be caring without telling your opinions and your thoughts. But what really upset me was a history class that was going into current events when it should have been world history. Why aren't you teaching about communism, teaching about things that our kids need to know and what is going on there? So I asked the question. I tell my kids, you know what, I need to bring this up. They're scared that they're going to get a failing grade for a parent sticking up because it's happened before. And I know this to be true because my graduated son of two years ago had experienced this. It's not okay. It's not okay to do that. And keep checking, seriously? I'm done. Get off your laptop. Seriously, I'm shocked. Why? Because there's another teacher right down the road at Leroy Green Academy who did the same thing to my son yes. and to many others. Lawsuit. And you people know who it is. I'm not even going to mention the name because thank God for these people because I'm going to go talk to them and they're going to do another video because you're going to see another video as soon as they get to talk to me. I promise you that. You already know his name. I don't even got to mention it. I'm appalled that that man is still teaching at my daughter's school. I cannot believe it. My daughter is taking AP World History. She's so uncomfortable with taking the class. You know why she's taking that class? Because I wouldn't let her be in this other person's class. That's on you. I will say I've watched a lot of school board meetings and a lot of the ones I've watched are in Loudoun County where it's still a lot of parents are very upset, it's very heated. This is the, but even in Loudoun County, like this is the first meeting I saw that was this passionate with this many people and all the parents were on the same page, every single one of them. So what I gathered by watching this, according to what the parents are saying, the parents are saying that this goes way deeper than this teacher. Uh, it goes way deeper than just that one school. And the parents are saying that kids have complained before and parents have complained before but nothing was done and a lot of them project veritas was also there filming live while this was happening and all of the parents were not all of them but a, a large number of parents were thanking project veritas and they were saying nothing happened until you released that video and now they're finally taking action for what we've been concerned about for a very long time these parents were demanding 
a criminal investigation into this person and to possibly other people. They were saying they even want counseling for kids that were in his classroom. If you remember also on his video, he said there were several other teachers at the school who feel the same way he does. They were demanding that the school find out who those teachers are and take disciplinary action. It was heated. Parents were saying, we're not going anywhere. We're gonna be here every single school board meeting. So the school board itself, they had one about five minute re recess. It ended up being a few minutes longer, but they had a five minute recess, came back, and then the, the parents continued. And I believe it was about maybe two hours into the entire school board meeting. Uh, the parents, they broke again, the school board broke again, and the parents were under the impression that they were breaking for a recess. And then, Project Veritas caught the school board members driving away. So the school board members left before the meeting was over without letting the, informing the parents that the meeting was over. Apparently, they left because one of their school members or one of the school board members just walked out and they have to have a certain number there. So they all ended up leaving. They had their attorney come out and speak to the crowd and say that uh, they had to leave and anyone's um, anyone can go to the attorney and ask questions, but that's really all we know so far. So they left and that was it. The parents spoke their minds, uh, they left, but I do not for a second think that this is the end of it. I continued to watch Project Veritas, uh, their live coverage of what was going on and they stayed a while after the school board left to talk to some of the parents. Some of the parents were saying like, I'm gonna reach out to you too because this is happening at my kid's school or there's other things that you need to know about. I wanna read you something interesting. So this is Education Code, Title II, Article Four um, of California. It says, no teacher giving instruction in any school or on any property belonging to any agencies included in the public school system shall advocate or teach communism with the intent to indoctrinate or inculcate the mind of any pupil or preference for communism and prohibiting the advocacy of teaching of communism with the intent of indoctrinating or inculcating a preference in the mind of any pupil such as doctrines the legislator does not intend to prevent the teaching of the facts about communism rather the legislator intends to prevent the advocacy of or inculcation and indoctrination into communism as a here and after defined for the purpose of undermining patriotism for and the belief in the government of the united states of america wow for purposes of this section communism is a political theory that the presently existing form of government of the united states or this state should be changed by force violence or other unconstitutional means to a uh, totalitarian dictatorship, which is based on the pr principles of communism as expounded by Marx, Lenin, and Stalin. So this is California. That's California Education Code. And this teacher who is teaching these things to his student was going against California Education Code, has used his role to prey upon young minds. It's scary because we keep finding these teachers and it's so and some of what they do isn't as blatant at this teach as this teacher it's very insidious but the good news is every single time we seem to find one of these teachers they're getting disciplinary action and watching all of these parents so passionate and so unified last night was really inspiring and i think it's a snowball effect every time you see one person standing up another person stands up and another person stands up and you know something i learned like whether being in a bad work environment or even a bad relationship sometimes you get so used to being uncomfortable or you get so used to seeing things and nothing happens that you don't stand up so the more people stand up the more other people will have courage to stand up and something i heard a, a few parents say at this school board meeting was you know what i saw maybe a year or two ago i saw a little thing here or i saw a little thing here that really was concerning to me but you know i just 
I just kept going. I was like, no, it's not that big of a deal. But I think now more and more and more parents are going to realize, you know what? When I see that little concerning thing, I should say something. So that is what happened last night. Let me know what you guys think about that. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you later. Bye.